Hi everyone, Eileen here. I'm going to show you the uh, bleeding art tissue technique today. I have some uh, of these videos on YouTube that I made some years ago using this uh, tissue. But this is a different way of using it. So I've sort of updated it and I'm finding it, um, it well, it isn't better, it's just different. So if you want to have a look at the other videos that I've got about this, they're on YouTube and they're about three or four years old. Okay, now you can see that I've got the tissue here already on the card because there's a certain amount of wait time, at least half an hour between applying the tissue and taking it back off again. And you will need to take it off because it will dry out and it will just go shriveled up and brown and crispy as we do actually. Um, so consequently, <laughs> Uh, I've got this uh, curing <laughs> now and uh, I'm waiting for it to dry a bit more but I'm going back to the beginning now and show you how I got this far. Scoreboard. And a piece of cardstock. Now this is Paper Mill Direct White Linen cardstock. It's textured. A textured cardstock is good for this technique, but not all of them. Some of them are texture. When you add water to the texture, it will, it will blacken as it breaks down the fibres. This uh, Paper Mill Direct White Linen seems to hold the water a little, little better, but you still need to be careful that you don't drown it. So texture side down onto a scoreboard and then I'm taking the um, bone folder and in the middle of the card I'm just putting some random lines, different lengths, different widths apart and I'm keeping them more or less in the middle of the cardstock. So I've done some vertical lines now, I'm turning it over and remember to put the cardstock back down into, with the texture side down. And now I'm going to put some, again vertical this way, but when you turn the card over, of course, it will be horizontal. So again, don't be too precious about it. If they're wonky, it doesn't matter. Uh, so different widths, different lengths. And different depths too. Uh, I don't want to break the fibres too much though, to be honest. So this is what you should have. And I'll just check that you can see okay. Yeah, you can. But I'll bring that up. Can you see? So that is just an embossed lines. that's all. And all it does is give a channel to the uh, bleeding art tissue to sort of wander around your card. Okay, so now I'm going to show you about the tissue. And first of all, the tissue, and this is, uh, it's called Spectra. Not every tissue will bleed. This is specifically called bleeding art tissue. And it, and it is specifically full of, well, I don't know what, stain, pigment, ink, I don't know, but whatever it is, there's... It bleeds really well. There's 20 assorted colours. The sheets are large, 20 inches by 30 inches. And I got them from Amazon, 20 sheets in here. And when I bought them, which is some time ago, because I bought a lot, because I wanted to do some workshops with them, they were just about 2 99 a packet, really cheap. But uh, I don't know if they're still that price. I haven't looked lately, to be honest. But they are a good investment. They last a long time. So that's the pack. And then I cut them up. These are the sheets. And using a pair of scissors, I cut them up into squares. Or whatever shape you like. You can do strips and whatever. And then I get some circle dies and in this case I've used this one this circle die 
and I cut them out into circles. Why? Because I like circles. I mean, you can use any shape that you want, really, or you don't need to cut them at all. As I've said, you can tear it. So I cut them, cut the uh, tissue up in the sheets, keep it in the uh, a, a wadge, <laughs> and then I just plonk that on the top of my die cut and put it through my die cut machine. And then that gives me the circles. Now you will get, of course, um, this residue, waste. Don't throw that away because I often use that and if you screw it up and pop it down onto your mat, just screw a piece at a time and add water, you can actually paint with it. It will bleed the colour out onto your mat and you can pick the colour up with a paintbrush so there's nothing wasted. So I don't get rid of any of that residue or surplus. I keep it all. But it's the circles that I'm mainly interested in for this technique today. Any questions, please leave me a comment. And but I think that I've given you the, the information from what I can remember. So I've used this and that's given me all of these. Now we'll take them apart, but don't lick your fingers. If you lick your fingers, you're going to get the stain all over you. And it is a stain, believe me. <laughs> so try not to lick your fingers when you're separating them. Put that in there. So let's bring them over. Now I'm going for fairly pale colours. I just want to pop this back on there. These are my most used dyes, as you can see, so they're close to me. Right. I'm going to start with um, a pale blue, well, palish blue anyway. I've got that one. Oh, now move them well away from you. Um, I don't think you'll be able to see them now, but you need to. I'm using water in a spray, and you need to keep the tissue well away from where you're spraying, otherwise, you'll just wreck it and have to cut it again. So, I'm putting on a small amount of water just onto the cardstock, one squirt only or spray, and then popping down the first. It just gives it something to cling to. And popping down the uh, first piece of tissue and uh, two, two sprays maximum. Don't go mad with the water because you're, you're going to get more water on that in a moment anyway. So that is uh, my first layer. And then coming down a bit, couple of squirts again that's my second circle and then I'm still coming down again a bit of orange um, shall I go pale green why not let's go pale green I found that the darker the colors mm, didn't work so well the brighter and maybe some of the paler colors gave me the look that I was looking for because I I'm going to put a stencil on this and so consequently the stencil is going to be the main feature so the the color mustn't overpower it and the darker the colors didn't didn't really work i mean try it and see how you get on so that's one two three four i'm going to do i think one more uh, i'm going to put a lemon on down there and then a little bit more water and then start moving it about and you can drip it and it will go down the emboss lines and, and basically I'm just going to let it work its magic now. Um, just take a kitchen towel. You do need to begin with mop up the surplus water that's at the sides. Mop that up. But I'm not going near the tissue just mopping that up and of course wiping here as well and then we'll have another little drippy drippy and over there you will be removing the tissue and hopefully you'll get some of the circle shapes left but if you don't that doesn't matter so again just mopping up the tissue but letting it work its magic in the middle right <clears throat> so you need a good half an hour if you want to leave it longer that's fine you can leave it all night if you want to, that's fine. You will just find that the tissue has just crinkled up and it's just laying on the surface where it's dried out. So, uh, you know, it, the time really doesn't matter. 
but at least half an hour for it to give you the colour that you're looking for. But that's working really well. Now this piece that I did earlier, that has had half an hour, and as you can see, it's quite pale now. I have removed the tissue from two areas, and look, that's dry now, I can even remove it with my fingers. So, you, you remove it all. I've got some of the circle shape, but I'm happy with, with the look that I've got. Um, now, I'm going to, uh, now what is it I'm going to do next? You know, the mind's gone total blank now. Oh, dry it, <laughs> that was it. I knew I wasn't ready for the stencil yet. And make sure that it's really bone dry. Lift it up from that so that the air circulates underneath. This is a very simple technique. You can do lots of things. You can put um, your cardstock through an embossing folder and put bleeding art tissue on top of that. I'm just showing you the basics this time, really, and something simple and quick to do. Okay. So that's dry. I'm sure it will go back to its proper shape shortly. If not, I shall put it in a couple of books or put a couple of books on top of it to make it go back in. And now I'm going to apply the stencil, and this is Archival Black, and a smoothie. And the stencil I'm using is a dragonfly from Funky Fossils. I'm just going to line it up on my cardstock. I don't want it over the whole card. I think that will round about there will be fine, like so. And a piece of tape. It's a very quick um, project, so I'm not going to get my stencil station out. Obviously, it won't lie flat because the stencil isn't magnetic. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Oh, and by the way, your hands get full of uh, ink. Just telling you, okay. <laughs> oh, now I must be careful because I'm going to rock the camera. Sorry if I did that. So I'm just putting the black archival on in layers. That's layer one. And you just keep going until you get a nice, black, opaque look. Doesn't take long. Okay, I think that might be it. It is. Like so. Now I'm going to now get a paintbrush, and this is a um, flat top, well it's co uh, slanted actually, slanted uh, flat edge top, and some white paint. Uh, this is paper artsy white paint. going to put a, a little on my mat and I have some water handy so I'm just going to dry brush certain areas of the tissue to make it look uh, a little more arty Does, do you know what I mean so it's Gives it a, a 
sort of a painted look in some areas, especially where I've got those embossed lines. It adds more interest. That's the word I'm looking for. Just adds more interest, but don't overdo it, as I'm inclined to do that. Um, and also, if you've got any ugly bits, you can take them out with the white paint and give shape too. Go in and take some of the tissue out to give you a better shape on your card. But basically, I just like the look of the brushed on white paint. I'm not keen on that, so that goes. I'm not keen on that bit either, so that goes, but I'm staying away from my stencil because I do like that. So let's put a few lines in there. Don't have to be too careful. I'm going to put some in there. Uh, there's a bit of stray black ink there. That's gone now. And then coming down here. Knowing when to stop is key. <laughs> now I think I'll just put some in there for the balance. Some more lines there, some embossed lines. The paint sits on the top, and obviously, it um, you can see the embossed lines a little clearer. So, it's the same with this one. Sort of, this is the bit you've got to be careful at, but because once it's on, you can't really take it off, but you could just remake the card. I mean, it doesn't take long, does it? So I think that's going to do me. That My eye's going to this bit here, so I'm going to bring that, take that out. I think that's a bit of an ugly spot. When the paint dries, you won't be able to see it. Um, I mean from around the edges, because at the moment it's quite wet. Okay, so that's sort of adding interest number one. And then adding interest number two, back to my faithful white pen, black pen. But first I want to pop a stamp on. Now this is stamped from Sweet Poppy Stencils and it's, it's from the A6 size stamp set called Cheers. And you get lots of... Um, words really useful and this is a, a nice one for this I think called good times I know times for some of us or all of us in fact is quite difficult but sometimes when I'm crafting I feel that they're good times as well and I hope that you do the same so good times is what I'm aiming for stamp mat, trying to avoid the paint <laughs> and let me just see that I'm not out of shot oh no, you can see, okay and then I'm going to pop good times in here like so smudge the S a little bit there but I'm sure you'll forgive me with that and I've also got a little bit of black ink here but as I've got my paintbrush handy and some white paint, that's an ugly spot that I'll have no problem getting rid of. So we'll pop that on there. Um, now I'm going to add a little bit more interest now and I'm going to use my Posca pen to do a bit of splashing just to bring it in. You can doodle if you like. You can do some doodling anywhere that you want to. Uh, adding uh, random uh, dots and dashes and crosses, anything that you want to. So I'm just going to use some white pen, Posca Uni, uh, Uni Posca pen, and this one is a bullet shaped 
0.7 millimeters I don't want to have too much over my main image so I'm covering that up and I'm just breaking up mm, that's going over my stamp mat that isn't a good idea either okay that's done so pop that there and then a bit more down here so that's white and then again using the Posca pen this is black so I don't need to cover my image so I can get a bit closer and that's it really so I hope that that was useful to you as you can see that the circles that I originally started with have disappeared the longer you leave them the more pronounced they will be so if you want to leave them longer then that is where you're going to get more of a circle shape but I'm quite happy with that and I've got a card blank here that I made and a piece of copy paper so that you're not seeing so much of all the detritus that is hanging around on my mat. <laughs> okay, we'll get rid of that. I always think that if you take time with your work, you need to take time displaying your work. And uh, it's well worth it because it's the effort that you've made already that you've invested in you don't want to waste it so that will go over the top and I shall stick that on there and that will be a one layer card I'm still getting bits of <laughs> ink on the side hey ho no worries okay you can use bleeding art tissue through a stencil that is always a good idea as well this is pretty basic but i hope that you enjoy doing it and you'll have a go with it thanks ever so much i'll be back on saturday i'm doing uh, some lavinia stamps work on saturday and sunday so i'll see you then bye for now <laughs>